In this week's show, our guest is Josh Baczynski, a search engine optimization expert. He's a PhD in science, and one of his names online is the secret SEO guru. Uh, he has a video cast and does tutorials and experiments. He's also the creator of Don't Be Evil, Google Secret War uh, documentary. Uh, you contacted us to get your message across. So tell us a little bit about um, what got you involved in that type of, um, you call it science. So for those that are not familiar with search engine optimization, tell us how that's connected to your PhD or it, are you involved with information technology from the beginning or was that something that, that you developed with time? So um, thanks, uh, David. And uh, thanks for having me on the show. I appreciate it. Um, yeah, those are good questions. Um, so my PhD was in uh, philosophy and science. It was an interdisciplinary PhD I did at York University, uh, or I'm doing at York University. I haven't finished it yet. Uh, I'm on sabbatical, which probably means I will never return <laughs> because I don't want to. I can make much more money uh, doing uh, marketing consulting. Uh, and I can uh, get my message out of what I really want to talk about, which is philosophy and politics and current stuff. And I developed a system of meditation and I've moved on with my life to do quite a lot of stuff. I'm doing a podcast called Comic Versus Philosopher right now. We're having Colin Mockery on the show next week. So I have a lot of other stuff going on. Uh, but the science in my PhD uh, kind of helped me, uh, quite frankly, reverse engineer Google's algorithms. I uh, And then... That's my marketing consulting. And then from there, I have a group where I, I uh, teach these secrets to small businesses, mom and pop small businesses, so that they can appear fairly in Google search results. Google has been on a campaign of prioritizing big brands, a campaign of white supremacy, a campaign of American supremacy, uh, a campaign of uh, uh, oligarchy, uh, uh, quite frankly, the rule of the rich, uh, and uh, it's pretty well documented. And uh, for, for example, um, uh, Google's ex-CEO, uh, Eric Schmidt, uh, was quoted as saying, and I quote, brands are not, the are not the problem. Brands are the solution. Brands are how we clear out the cesspool of the internet, end quote. So he considers mom and pops, he considers small businesses to be cesspools, uh, his word. Uh, and uh, they decided uh, consciously that they're going to go for big brands and they're going to prioritize big brands in their search results. So, you know, like Walmart, uh, Target, you know, uh, Nike, you know, if somebody had to search for shoes, you can, you can, you can be damn sure that some mom and pop selling, you know, shoes down the street is not going to show up for that query. You know, Nike's going to show up, Walmart's going to show up, Target's going to show up, stuff like that. And they made that conscious decision over a decade ago. To, uh, uh, to become the Better Business Bureau and decide who they think should be ranking uh, and decide that small mom and pops and uh, 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 small businesses were not good enough and they were gonna, because they were a big brand themselves. This is how capitalism works, right? It's supposed to be a fair free system, but it's not. The big co companies get together and say, hey, you know what? We wanna make more money and we don't want any competitors. So let's all band together and sell each other stuff Let's all band together and promote each other's stuff. And Google was part of that group and said, yep, sure. And so they promote big brands now, uh, giving more money to the mega rich and taking more money from small mom and pops. And so I was very lucky. I was able to use my PhD to, uh, to uh, implement a gut, a grand unified theory, a whole program. Everything they say is a lot. Everything every mega rich company says is a lot. Everything Google says a lot. I ignore everything they say. Their spokespeople, John Mueller, Gary Ilyish, uh, 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 Miley Oe, uh, everybody else, David Sullivan, Danny Sullivan, uh, even, even the, um, the supposedly uh, free and fair ones like uh, Barry Schwartz, he's, he's paid by Google, just not with money. Uh, and their top assistants are paid by Google, just not with money. And they're there simply for PR smokescreen. It's Bernaysian uh, Capitalism 101. If you've watched, it's actually a great documentary. And it's free on YouTube. It's called The Century of the Self. And it talks about uh, Edward uh, Bernays, uh, who was literally the nephew of Sigmund Freud, believe it or not, in the early 20th century. 
And he took his uncle's philosophies, who stole most of that from Nietzsche, and uh, uh, sold it to uh, government and to uh, corporations uh, for the purposes of, of uh, using psychology, high-end psychology, to uh, brainwash people to sell better to them. And one of those tactics is, is the mega rich bands together uh, and they have a very aggressive public relations uh, strategy where they say the exact opposite. They're doing bad things in the, in the background. They say good things up front. And you can see even Google employees uh, know this, of course, because they work there and they uh, are rebelling against this. For example, a lot of Google employees recently went on strike uh, because they found out that Google was giving data to the NSA uh, un unconstitutionally and illegally. Uh, and uh, they thought this was wrong, that they were spying on people, and they, uh, a lot of people quit, and there was strikes and stuff like that. You didn't, not a lot of people heard, not a, not a lot of people heard about that, because Google, of course, very, very wisely, from the perspective of the mega rich, wisely, uh, decided to, of course, tamp all that down and make sure no one could understand that or hear, hear about that. So, so yeah, so uh, my PhD uh, and my, my, uh, uh, philosophy was able to help me with those people there, but that's just the tip of the iceberg. That's kind of how I make my money and kind of how I started with information technology uh, from a very young age. Actually, since I was 19, I was, uh, my first job was fixing computers for the University of Winnipeg. But I branched out from there into a broader philosophy. Like I said, I have a podcast now called Comic Versus Philosopher. We're having Colin Mockery on next week. Uh, and uh, you can find that at bit.ly slash comic versus philosopher or just search comic versus philosopher in Google with the first thing that comes up. Uh, also, I have a, a developed a system of meditation called block meditation. And uh, it takes the Eastern methods and the Western methods and combines those together. And it's a very powerful system of meditation. And that's at bit.ly slash block meditation, B-A-C-H meditation. I didn't realize how many videos on YouTube ripped off Johann Sebastian Bach? Told my system something different. If I realized people have been doing that, so sadly you're gonna find a lot of that on there. It's hard to find me online, uh, but uh, it's uh, Bach meditation. You can just search "hack your brain uh, with meditation," or you can search my name "hack your brain with meditation" and it'll come. Okay, uh, there's a lot to unpack on on the beginning of our conversation. So if you could bear with me, um, you're the mystic skeptic. We try to really delve into the subjects and we've been having a lot of struggles this this new season well, we've had people on the right uh, attacking the left as the worst possible and then we have people on the left attacking the right as the worst possible and we we want to be able to use terms that that are helpful so uh, when you say that there's white supremacist and American supremacy uh, tactics or agendas within Google. What do you mean by that? And what's the evidence that you have to support those views? Sure. So not white supremacist, but white supremacy. White supremacy. So white supremacists are neo-Nazis. I'm not saying there's neo-Nazis in Google, although they operate very similar to the Nazis. Uh, but no, white supremacy. So white supremacy is the theory that there is a unconscious, uh, semi-conscious or even unconscious uh, attempt uh, to maintain the status quo of, uh, quite frankly, Caucasians from Europe being the richest people on the planet and controlling the planet. Uh, this is for racial reasons. This is for xenophobic reasons. This is just for cultural reasons. Uh, people tend, uh, the Greek word is storga or storge, is, that's patriotic love. Uh, uh, you can read more about that on C.S. Lewis's book, uh, Four Loves. Uh, and uh, people just do it naturally. Uh, like, likes, like, right? So uh, uh, if, you, if you've never seen someone of darker skin, uh, you might be taken aback, you know, like, oh, I've never seen that before. A little bit of xenophobia comes up. And that's natural. That's nothing wrong with that. That's your, that's your evolutionary gift of keeping, making sure, you know, you don't touch stuff that's different. The xenos is the Greek word, the, the stranger. So uh, like, don't touch spiders, don't touch snakes, you know, because they're dangerous, right? You see someone of darker skin, you've never seen that before, maybe, or if you're dark skin, you see someone of white skin, never seen that before. It's perfectly natural for humans to feel a little bit of xenophobia. Though. So whether or not, I don't subscribe to white supremacy as this, this global cabal of everyone talking to each other. It's not the Illuminati. 
it's more of an unconscious, uh, 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 if you look at the psychology and the neuroscience behind it, it's more of a subconscious kind of reaction. Uh, 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 they perceived what they perceive as good. And if they perceive darker colors as bad, then they'll pick those, pick those last. So, so, I mean, I, don't, I didn't come ready armed with, with a stack of evidence of studies that, that are show that this happened. I think it's pretty obvious that bias occurs. Uh, and if you don't like the white supremacy idea, uh, there definitely is a rich supremacy idea. And there's definitely an American supremacy idea as well. It's baked right into American patriotism. We're the best. Everyone else sucks. We should be the richest uh, uh, country on the planet. Uh, you know, uh, and we're going to maintain, we're going to, ever since World War II, we're going to make sure that's the case. That's very clearly been the philosophy of the United States since World War II. Everybody knows it. No one denies that. Uh, it's, you can go to a baseball game, <laughs> like go, to, go to any patriotic event and you can see this kind of, this kind of behavior and these kind of philosophies. The rest of the world has noticed too. Um, uh, and I'm not saying that's right or wrong. The problem is is when uh, rights are being abused. The problem is, is when laws are not being upheld. The problem is, is when uh, uh, protections have been put in place to protect people from the mega rich uh, are being slowly washed away by, by actors. So, so I, think it's, I think there's enough meat there to say that it's probably something there and something going on. And uh, government definitely seems to feel the same way when they keep making laws to protect the little guy against the big guy. It's just accidental that the, the circle of people hurt by white supremacy, if it exists, and the people hurt by rich supremacy, that's a very tight circle, right? Some could say, Ice-T, for example, the rapper said, it's not that racism doesn't exist, it does, but that's only part of the problem and a small part. Actually, a larger part of the problem is it's, it's wealth, right? Uh, impoverished people of color just happen to live in impoverished neighborhoods and it's because they're impoverished that there's higher crime rates and things like that, not because they're people of color. Uh, so if, if you fix one problem, you fix the other one, so to speak. So I think this is, I think this is quite prevalent, and I think there's definitely enough of it going on to, to say, yeah, there's probably some, some truth to some of those things going on there. Do you, do you disagree? Do you deny that? Uh, I, don't, uh, I, I don't feel that... Uh... I always feel that things are more complicated than what they, they are portrayed as. So if we're going to talk about uh, wealth, um, in your TEDx uh, conversation, you were uh, sharing something that I thought was very good about how um, the original democratic system was amended, and that's what the founding fathers developed. And I think it was a genius system. But the, the element that no one ever talks about is that they were all uh, capitalists with a very strong desire to keep the European culture going. So if you really think about, uh, it was amended, but it wasn't fully- Can you say that again? Your, your internet broke out. Yeah. It, Sorry, your, your, your internet broke that. out for about half of that. So, so when we say the founding fathers were geniuses, they were geniuses mm -hmm. in the sense of they, they amended to the, to the original um, idea, but it had other forces under it, and that was the capitalist nature of all of them. They were all merchants. They were all interested in keeping their, their system going. And I even had a um, uh, professor of African-American studies say that maybe one of the reasons they broke away from England was because uh, uh, slavery was becoming illegal over there. And over here, they could have it without that uh, limitation. Uh, yeah. I'm still yet to find out if that's that's true or not, or based on the time period. But the biggest issue at hand is that um, people make well, what's the opposite of what's happening? If capitalism is destructive, if it is imperialistic, then what's the opposite? And then you go into the Marxism or the socialism, and there's no happy middle that people are are describing. What well, um, so when we're talking about European culture being supreme in the sense of um, having its tentacles all over the world, uh, American businesses being in the forefront, either because of innovation or because of uh, tactics of, of dismissal of other groups. What, what, what solutions, what alternatives do we have to be able to build a more robust and more equitable system, in your opinion? 
that yeah that that's a great question david so yeah um yeah in my ted talk uh, i talked about democracy 1.0 so that was ancient athens right and when the athenian landowners voted that socrates should be put to death he was put to death because there's no conception of of liberal rights there's no conception of human rights so that's where the founding fathers of various liberal democracies not just america but you know canada and various various other places invented human this concept this concept of human rights and, they, and that that idea had been bantied around and by philosophers for a number of centuries before uh, and they very wisely uh, thought of a system of checks and balances to the vote because you didn't want the mob ruling you don't want a tyrant ruling but you don't want the mob ruling either because it's equally could be equally tyrannical as we see on twitter or we see on social media people can be very vicious right they can be polarized they can be swayed in a direction and that amplifies that virality, that gamification of gossiping and gamification of vitriol and hatred becomes its own self-running train, right? And they, they, they build up. So they very wisely, uh, I totally agree, uh, whether they lived by it or at the time or not, uh, thought of attacked individuals from themselves, protect them from other people and protect them from the government of what the government can do to them and how the government has to treat them. So, so the solution is sticking to the ideals that were, that were set. The solution is further separations and checks and balances of government and, and, uh, and uh, uh, business and, and the, the, the people level. It, it is a false dichotomy that, that the only answer, the only solution to capitalism is Marxism. That's just, that's just completely wrong. And that's, that's something the Americans t say again and again. I don't know why. Probably because you had to vilify the Russians for so many decades to get the political will and money to fight them and have that Cold War for so long. There is a million answers in between capitalism and Marxism. Uh, I, like, I like capitalism plus, right? I like capitalism that has, uh, and everyone would agree, you don't actually have a free market. We, we on the planet don't actually have a free market capitalism. There are many things you're not allowed to buy and sell, right? And, and, uh, and so I equate it to the, the game Monopoly. Uh, uh, the playing the game Monopoly is fine as long as it's an even playing field for everybody who starts. Systemically, there's no uh, people of color being disenfranchised. Uh, systemically, there's no people of X, Y, Z gender being disenfranchised either uh, implicitly or explicitly. It's a, it's a level playing field. All the players start with the same amount of money, so to speak. Uh, and no player can ever get rich enough that they can buy the bank. And no player can ever get rich enough that they can destroy the system that, that made them rich in the first place. It really is, the problem really is the mega rich. Uh, Bernie Sanders was right. And it doesn't make him, it doesn't make me a socialist, I'm not. It doesn't make him a socialist necessarily. I mean, he doesn't even really know what socialism means, quite frankly. It doesn't make him a Marxist either. Um, uh, it, it means, it just, all it means is adding in the proper checks and balances into capitalism that you're not allowed to become a monopoly. And everybody knows this, right? Uh, 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 the, the phone company, uh, was it Ma Bell, they called it, in the 70s, became a monopoly. And then they wrote a law to stop that because no, if, if you don't, these corptocracies get too big. And then they start, to, they start to change the rules of the system. We've forgotten that lately, sadly. And so our largest corptocracies, which is the FANG, which is Facebook, Amazon, Apple, Netflix, and Google, uh, uh, have all lined the pockets of politicians to make sure that none of their, their, their technological corptocracies can be, can be changed. And we can see the result. Uh, the richest billionaires have come from tech. Um, uh, oil is no longer the most data, data about you. And why do they want that? For Bernie reasons, I've already said. Because the more data they have about you, psychologically, the better they know you, the, the more they can sell to you. And that's the reason why data is so important and so, so expensive. Uh, and so we have willing slaves. We, we moved from a master, we think we moved from a master slave economy. We didn't. We moved from, uh, uh, all we did was, was abolish slavery from being legal even though ironically there's more slaves on the planet now that they say than there ever have been, namely sex slaves in the, in the, in the sex trade. Uh, but let's ignore that little inconvenient fact for a second. 
uh, uh, they didn't abolish slavery, however. Now we are willing slaves. We're digital slaves and we're wage slaves. We make so little money on the dollar that we have to borrow to live and pay more and more of our profit to more and more of the, 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 the petty uh, capitalists who are trying to get, gouge us for, you know, for the X percent here and Y percent there. So when, and the, when and the only way you saw, sorry, and the only way you solve that is by making the mega rich pay the taxes they're supposed to pay and rolling that back into the system and then making strong protections so that the mega rich can't get ludic ludicrously rich. At the end of the day, money is not imaginary. Money represents resources. That's it. It's money is a promissory note for resources. And we have finite resources on the planet. We cannot give 80% of the resources to three or four mega billionaires, right? The rest of us don't have enough air or water or food at the end of the day if we did that. So if they cashed in, so to speak, we'd all be screwed, right? So clearly the system is broken. Uh, four people should not be able to own most of the world's resources, you know, whatever it is, 10, 10 billionaires, mega billionaires, hundreds of billionaires should not be able to own most of the world's resources uh, and, and, and not, not be able to get rich in a system that we allowed them to get rich and then turn around and destroy said system or ignore said system. So that's the solution to mega rich. It's so quite when simple. We have, when we have a two party system and both uh, sides are uh, lined up with money from, you know, because it's kind of like, uh, you mentioned Trump in, in your TEDx, and we know that he was um, putting money on different politicians, both Democrats and Republicans, that would benefit him. And then now that he's in power, people are doing the same, that they're supporting his campaign and supporting uh, Kamala Harris and, and Joe Biden's campaign, and whoever wins, they end up benefiting them. So um, I, I just feel like we're running in circles whenever someone says, well, uh, these are the ways that we can make America better. Is, is it already so locked in that there's really other than, than uh, an upheaval from, from the masses that it were ever changed from the way that it's been said for the last 30 years? Well, you asked the, the tough question, right? So I'm talking about this to America, uh, but uh, uh, yeah, you guys have a bit of a problem things have kind of gotten past the point where it can be fixed, in my opinion, in many ways. Uh, you can't have a revolution of the people. The mega rich are far too rich. You don't even know who they are, most of them. They have their own private islands they can retreat to. You could have a million people in the Michigan militia and you can give them as many AR-14s or 16s or whatever they're called, as much as you like. There's no ground troops in America that can take on the American military. There's no revolution possible. The American, any modern military will destroy you from a thousand miles away with, with predator drones. You'll never even see them. They'll disperse you with sonic weapons or microwave weapons that cause extreme pain. You'll never even see them. We don't even hear about the protests anymore that are going on around, around the world. It's boring, it's old news. Protests don't work. Uh, that was the French Revolution. That was three centuries ago. That, that worked because the technological difference between the rich and the poor was not great. Now the technological difference between the rich and the poor is, is, is uh, uh, a difference in kind. There's, there's, no, there's no getting at the rich that way. What you need to do is you need to educate. Education is what's been eroded, right? And so I like to say this, instead of taking $20 and going and buying a Starbucks and protesting in the street, uh, which is not really raging against the machine, you bought some Starbucks, you're kind of raging alongside the machine, you kind of help the machine by giving Starbucks 20 bucks to go out and you know, like bitch and moan for an hour and then no one sees you on the news and you just, all you did was tactically expose yourself to whatever fucking troops they have with boots and whoever they are, like, and got a, got a rubber bullet in the eye, good for you. Or, or, you know, people die in these things, right? Like, so, so as I have three black belts, I teach martial arts. The last thing you should do is go to a, go to a riot or, or a, or a, I tell all my students, don't pick fights. Like, don't, don't go to, don't, that's the first rule of self-defense. Don't start a fight, right? Don't, don't go to these riots and don't go to these, these, uh, these marches because they're just going to take your face and read your face and then you're going to be in a database somewhere. What you do is you take your $20 and you use the same system the rich does. You go into Facebook and you buy an ad and let's say you're on the left 
And let's say you believe that the right wing is being a little silly when it comes to climate change, denying that it's true and that it's clearly true. The science shows it is clearly true, by the way. And, uh, and, and, uh, but they haven't heard it. That's the problem. We're in, two, we're, we're in two truth bubbles. There's a left wing truth bubble and a right wing truth bubble. And they've never even talked back and forth anymore. The left know about a whole bunch of stuff the right's never heard of and the right of hearing stuff that the left never, never hear of, right? But anyway, so that's the, that's the problem. So this is the solution. For example, let's say you're on the left and you want to uh, educate some right-wing people of, about climate change. You write an article, wow, conservative scientist admits that climate change is real. Here's the proof. Make, make an article, just link to all the science there, pay 20 bucks and put that on Facebook and target all the viewers of Fox News. That's, about, that's gonna be about $3 a click of a Facebook ad. You'll only reach like six people, but you will have reached six people with the exact medicine that, that, that they need. That's gonna do far, far, far more for the planet and far more for your cause. And it works the same way. Like uh, I'll, be part, I'll be nonpartisan in this. Let's say you're on the right and let's say you have proof that vaccinations are bad. You have, you have an actual real scientific study made by real scientists. So fine, you'll find, you know, you'll, wow, scientists actually proves that some vaccinations are bad for you. You pay 20 bucks, you target all the viewers of NSNBC Right, you can do that in Facebook. Like, like, who do you want to target? I want to target MSNBC watchers. Okay, and then you send that over to them, and you send that truth information over to them. And that's the only way that this gets fixed is education. We can't have two different truth bubbles. Imagine having a, a work group where half of the company thinks that it's true that this engine is going to explode, and half of the company thinks this engine's not going to explode. You can't sell the engine. You can't fix it. Like you, you have. You have incommensurate truths. Right now, it, it, America is a, is a corporation that half of people believe something totally different than the other people. I don't mean like in morality. I mean like in facts, like in what science has proven. Until you get together on that, you, you, can't, you can't go anywhere. Let's go back to capitalism. So if, uh, if I post my, my YouTube video uh, mm -hmm. with no resources, I just make a little video, I was talking, and I post it. Mm -hmm. And then MSNBC or Fox News pays for being put on the front. Doesn't that, isn't that just normal capitalism? Whoever has the most money gets in the front of the line. And then when people search um, an interview with you, if you went on Fox News, you would be in the front. But if you came on my show, you would be at the end. How is that uh, unjust if they're a private company? I'm not sure I fully understand what you're asking because I'm not sure that's actually the way that it works. So you were talking, explain to us uh, about these um, algorithms because to me it seems that since nobody's watching television, nobody wants cable anymore. Now YouTube is the, 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 the platform. So all these companies with tons of money, they're investing into Facebook and YouTube and Google and they're getting the prime um, coverage and then everybody else who is free has been put in the back of the line. That's how it seems. Tell us really how it works based on, on your research. You mean in terms of ranking slots, like ranking position and search yes. and search? Yes. Uh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, no, it's really difficult. So that is the problem. Uh, YouTube, of course, is a Google property. So Google controls the truth that they want to see. They slant left. They slant, uh, uh, of course, of Silicon Valley. They slant left. Uh, and so they like putting up anything that's bad about Trump. Uh, and uh, they, they harshly will make sure that any conspiracy theory about Hillary, about having sex rings in pizza parlors, which is ridiculous, uh, they'll make sure that that never shows up. Um, uh, so yeah, it, it is a very tough problem. And the problem there is that people in office, uh, gray hairs in office, don't understand technology. They don't understand how it works. They don't understand how people consume information. They think people still read the paper and make phone calls, right? They, 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 they don't understand. Like, did you see when uh, Zuckerberg was, was called onto the carpet to talk to Senate? They're like asking IT questions. Like, how do I open my phone? You know, like, like it's, they have no, their grandma and grandpa, they have no idea how technology works. 
So because government has no idea how a technology works, they can't police it. They can't, they can't make any rules about it. And so that's the first problem is you need to have a government who understands technology. The second problem is you have to get money out of politics. So there's multiple problems. You need to get money out of politics. So FANG pays the most money to probably even more than oil at this point to, uh, to government. So you need to get money out of politics so they can't be bribed and can't be changed. And then they need to make fair systems and fair laws. I said in my TEDx talk, the, the best way to make a internet search uh, engine, they don't realize the internet is not a, a novelty anymore. It's not the 90s. The internet isn't a novelty anymore. The internet is the primary communication mode of the species that most of the species is on most of the day. So at least the rich ones, the rich countries that matter. So um, that, that affect the world tremendously. So uh, they don't realize that, you know, it's not, it's not a novelty that, that, that our, our social media and our, our search systems are where people consume most of their information. And that information is totally at the control of private for profit interests for the, of the mega rich. And so they control that narrative, of course, very strongly to be, uh, to get us angry at each other and fighting with each other. And this, so we don't, we don't wake up and realize the real enemy is the mega rich controlling them. So there's a lot of problems to fix. I agree. Uh, will we fix it in time before climate change? But again, with the algorithms, um, if you say that they're left leaning and the individuals from Google, they X out whoever they don't like, whoever they think is problematic. And there is a podcast that I listen to that he gets, he keeps getting booted out of YouTube and Amazon and they keep um, defunding his platform and they, they call him a conspiracy theorist. So I know how in America there's um, an assassination of character uh, as compared to in other regimes where they still assassinate people, uh, you know, physically. But um, when you say that it's left-leaning, wouldn't that, um, are, are they like the type of liberals that they don't even realize their, their white privilege? So even though they, they are left-leaning and they're pro-democratic, uh, they still uh, post uh, pro-white things and they forget about minorities? Is that what you're saying? And is it based on the algorithms or is it based on individuals? Uh, you talk a lot about censorship, but we had a guest on the show that said that censorship would only be if it would be government based. If it's a private company, it cannot be called censorship. Or can you tell us your, your perspective on that? Of course it's censorship. <laughs> of course it's censorship, right? You're blocking information. That's what censorship means. You're censoring it. Google is the biggest censorship uh, engine on the planet. They, they hide 99.9% .9 of the internet away from all of us. We only get to see 0.1% of the internet anymore. They filter out 99.9% .9 of the web pages that they crawl. Now, we would agree with probably most of the web pages, a lot of them that they crawl, just garbage pages with garbage on it, like, like gibberish, uh, child pornography, uh, a, lot of, uh, a lot of crime going on, a lot of sharing of credit cards and things like that. That's mostly what they filter out. Um, uh, that... Uh, out completely. You can't find it at all in Google. And then they just bury all the mom and pops and all the small actors and small players that, that are trying to also make money in the capitalist system. And that's how they, they cheat at monopoly, right? Is they, they, they hold those people down. So there's two kinds, there's many kinds of censorship. That's the one is gone entirely out of the index and the other one two are just deranked. Uh, so uh, now there were, what was the first part of your question? How does the algorithm actually work as compared to individuals just Xing out stuff? And what, wouldn't you support something like, maybe not the dark web, but something like the opposite of Google, another um, self, um, something made by the community or a grassroots style uh, search engine or other types of programs would be the solution that instead of people only using Google, branching out to the other systems and giving them a platform? Yeah, so that's what I said in my TEDx talk, and that the, the, the search utility for the internet cannot be private for profit controlled. The control F for the internet can't be private profit controlled, right? And so I said, uh, probably the best thing to do would be Wikipedia run it or some not for profit run it. And they should turn around and they should uh, defund Google and they should turn around and hire Google to be there because no one is better on the planet in Google, I fully admit, technology-wise, but, um, uh, but there, the fact that there's no governmental control over what they're doing, and there's no accountability for what they're doing, 
Uh, we have no rights in their system. We have no digital rights in their system and businesses have no digital rights in their system. So um, uh, some not-for-profit uh, 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 organizations should run it uh, and we should be able to control the rights that the searcher and searchee has in the system because it is the new, it's the new uh, Main Street, right? It's the new Wall Street, it's the new Main Street. It's, uh, it controls all information coming in or out. Uh, and so they put an abstraction layer on the Agora. They put an abstraction layer on the marketplace. And gray hairs don't realize this and it's gonna be very dangerous uh, uh, it already is dangerous to the right uh, because they do prioritize uh, left-wing stuff. The other stuff you talked about that I wanted to mention is, and it, it's not fully Google's fault. Uh, Google only has access to the web pages they have access to. Google has access to the entire internet. The problem is, is that people are reg racist and prejudiced and biased. So the internet is extra racist and prejudiced and biased because there's no repercussions for, for running off at the mouth on the internet, right? You can, you can let your racist, prejudiced, biased, uh, dirtiest secret desires out on the internet and let them, let them get bigger and stronger. And that's what Google has to, to parse and then return for search results. For example, if you search uh, in Google images, black couples, you'll get pictures of black couples. If you search for pictures of Indian couples, you get Indian couples. If you search for pictures of white couples, you will not see white couples, strictly. You will see many other kinds of couples. That's a left-wing knee-jerk reaction of them trying to turn the algorithm the other way, right? Or uh, you could do the same experiment, unless they've changed it by now, but search for professional haircuts and you see a bunch of white people. Search for unprofessional haircuts and you start to see people of other ethnicities there, uh, implying that perhaps that their haircuts are unprofessional. So um, uh, yeah, the, and that, so Google has, Google spends millions of dollars a day and has a team of hundreds of programmers just to combat the prejudice on the internet and try to whitewash it all and make everything look Disney and look great from the, the, their search engine. Because they don't, why? Because they care about us, because they care about uh, the truth, because they care about uh, left-wing values, not really. Because at the end of the day, it will, it will it'll damage their brand. It'll harm their brand and they will make less money. 95% of Google's profit is still from their search engine. No other, no other product they've made has made anywhere to close than their search engine, which makes hundreds of billions a year. So it's all, they're all the mega rich and all comes down to money at the end of the day. And, that would, and all that negativity would just hurt their brand. There is a small group of their engineers that have a left-leaning a project, but but mostly that company is just there to make money. You, you spoke about education. I don't know if you're familiar with what happened. I think it was in Arizona where they had a um, uh, minority or um, ethnic studies and there was books written by Latinos and African-Americans and the governor and the, the school board, they got mad because they were afraid that they were uh, seditious so they started banning the books and then the Latino community started doing uh, like trafficking books that were banned and having their own libraries. Wouldn't it be uh, a solution also to have our own uh, Google? I know you said the technology might be the problem, but wouldn't it be uh, good for people to support uh, a grassroots uh, based, uh, like you said, like a Wikipedia style search engine? And then the other component um, is um, this idea of, of li liberal values. So what some of my libertarians friends would say is like, let all the craziness come out. Why whitewash things? Like if you wanna have, like, I don't know if you remember the internet when it first came out, you would type something like uh, innocuous and the horrible stuff would jump out uh, of the page. Uh, they would say, let it all be because that's true liberty is let it all hang out. Um, is that what we're asking for or, or like, what are the measurements? Because when you talk about the government getting involved, so then the government, instead of a private company, is gonna be the one telling us what is appropriate. And you're gonna to have to have a bunch of checks to see if you're the right age and the right uh, mental status and stuff like that to be able to access these things. Is that, um, how would you respond to libertarians that would have issues with now having the very inadequate government that we have doing the policing instead of this private organization? 
Um, at least the government, you can't, get, you can't get away from government. At least the government is something that is ostensibly under our control. It's supposed to be. It's not enough right now in any country probably, but, but uh, because we're relying on outdated uh, governmental models. Uh, but it's impossible for someone to start their own Google. It costs billions of dollars a year to run Google. It, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's a technological near impossibility to serve. Uh, they have the most brilliant engineers on the planet running Google. Uh, it, it would be impossible to make something that could, could be even close to the levels that they provide. And uh, that's government's job is to open and send The, the, the catch is that they're supposed to do it based principles that protect us from how much they can oppress and censor. Uh, and at least we'd have the capability to, to control them. You can't control a private company. Uh, uh, Right-wing people like to say you can, you can't, right? No one's gonna stop using Google. If I made a campaign to stop using Google, no one would stop using Google and use Bing. That is, that is a smoke screen. It's a Bernaysian uh, smoke screen. It's Bernaysian rhetoric to be like, you know, to think you're moral because you don't shop at Walmart when you let everybody else on the planet shop at Walmart, that's, that's not being moral, right? It's the same thing. If you stop using Google at a protest, whoop de doo you haven't hurt Google in any way, shape, or form. You haven't stopped the evil things they're doing if you think they're evil. So that's just what, what really weak-minded people do to pretend that they're, they're doing moral things when they're really not doing moral things at all. At the end of the day, we need government. Government needs to protect us. Government needs to be run properly. Government cannot be corrupt. Uh, and uh, yes, it's hard. And yes, it's tough to get it, get that balance right. Um, uh, in terms of censorship, like just let let everyone see everything. It would harm so many people to do that, like letting your credit card be out there and let anyone try to, to hack it and so much money would be stolen. There'd be a lot of harm that would be going on. Um, but quite frankly, if government keeps running the way it is, so poorly, uh, uh, I, I might be up for, for libertarianism if, if I thought it, it would be a net, net, it wouldn't be as hurtful as, as the governmental solution. But uh, if at the end of the day, you need to have strong government, it needs to be run properly, uh, uh, or you'll have anarchy, you have the purge, and there's, that is, a, that is a either or. One slides into the other. You need strong government or things start to go to crap. Tell us about um, why do your documentary and some of the stories that you came across of people being destroyed, literally destroyed by Google because of the lack of access to um, the people buying the resources or their, their products. Yeah, so my, my documentary I, uh, I wrote, produced, uh, paid for myself. It cost me 0.4 million bucks right around there. Um, sat is on iTunes, at least it was last time I looked. Sadly, uh, Google was getting very interested in my documentary and interested in, in me. And that's, uh, that's something I don't need is, uh, you know, Google could destroy me very easily if they wanted to. I survived by not really being on their radar too much. So I couldn't really push the documentary. I couldn't go out there and, and promote it the way I wanted to, which is a shame because it's a great movie. It was very well made. I hired uh, Mark Nistico, my, my director. And editor is a great storyteller. Uh, he's a, is a wonderful filmmaker. And so it really is a high quality product. It's not like it's some, some crappy product. Uh, uh, and I do my best to host it. But uh, the people in it were, it was, it was terrible. Um, and they're not, they're not strange people. I got, I, ha I used to get weekly email or most of the mom and pops have been destroyed. Uh, uh, and they're off of Google now, but uh, uh, but, uh, yeah, um, there's one guy, uh, Barry, he, uh, he had a HVAC company and he was ranking very well in Google and had a good product and was selling it. And then for some reason, Google didn't like him, uh, and decided to rank all the big brand HVAC companies instead of this kind of small mom and pop guy. And he couldn't get, uh, any traffic from Google. Uh, he couldn't get his uh, business back. Uh, and, um, uh, he had to sell his, his prized, uh, I think it was a, a Camaro or something. He had some muscle car from the 60s. He had to sell some prized car just to have the money to come up to do the documentary. And so it breaks my heart that I couldn't do more with the documentary. And that's just one example. There's, 
uh, there was a, a mom and pop in uh, uh, Illinois who have uh, mentally challenged children and they were trying to sell jewelry. And they got, uh, they got out, uh, they, Google decided that uh, K's and all the big jewelers should show up first and they shouldn't show up at all. So, I mean, so, so other people, the, the retort I get is, well, why do they deserve to be at, at uh, on number one on Google? Google you know, why, why should their, their traffic be preserved and, and promised? And that's not the point. I'm not saying it should be. I'm saying, why is it that Google gets to make that decision? They are a private for profit company. It's not that, not, that's not that someone came out and made a better product. That's not what happened. It's that Google decided that they are a mega rich company and they're going to promote the mega rich because they're the, they're the old boys club of the mega rich promoting the mega rich. That's complete and utter horseshit. That's bullshit, right? You have no political control over Google or anyone in the fang. You have no political control over Facebook either, by the way, uh, uh, or Amazon or, or Apple. Uh, you, have no, you, have no, uh, you have no effective control over them from buying habits. You have no effective control of them from, from your usage. Everyone could stop using Facebook tomorrow in America. They'd still have over a billion users. So what, what needs to happen is the supposedly left-leaning countries like mine, Canada, or Finland or Norway needs to tell uh, Facebook and Google that unless they make certain changes to their system and the way that we can control their system and have a vote and have a say as to how Facebook operates or as to how Google operates, that they will be banned from that country and all the servers and IP addresses in that country will be banned and there will be no more Facebook and Google in Canada anymore and, and Canada can turn around and make their own national variant. Let's talk about Netflix for a moment. Um, you know, when it first came out, that's the only thing that people talked about. It's kind of like the Facebook. But now there's Tubi, there's Hulu, there's a bunch of other stuff. And as, as, a, as a user of Netflix, I actually don't care for it anymore. Even though we're still paying the membership, I've been able to find better movies and other uh, products that are free. So I feel like the market is actually... Uh, moving away from this membership based stuff. I know that a lot of podcasters say that that's the way to go, that if you have subscribers, that's how you're going to survive. And a lot of other people producing uh, different things, but something like Netflix, that it was one of the five things you mentioned, mm -hmm. it seems like it's, it's kind of losing its steam just for you know, personally. Like I feel like I'm willing to watch a couple of commercials if the movie is better. And if there's more, um, more diversity, um, do you feel that, that all these five things have the same amount of power? I know Amazon is to the point where you literally can't buy anything unless it's Amazon because of the speed or the availability. So mm -hmm. what about the other ones? Um, you mentioned Apple and, and YouTube now being part of Google. Uh, are they in the same um, ranking or are they kind of – I know that there was a point where Facebook and, and YouTube were fighting against each other um, – What's the latest regarding that? Yeah, so um, there can always be competing uh, channels for eyeballs. If you think about it as eyeball time, who gets the most eyeball time? The time that eyeballs are glued and the number of eyeballs that are glued to a screen through some portal. They used to call them web portals before Facebook became popular. It was just a web portal, like many web portals. MySpace was another web portal at the time. Eyeballs and how many minutes, how many seconds they're watching that particular portal. And yeah, in, in Netflix has nothing special. They were the first to market. They were the first to really make it uh, 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 a, 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 a verb to Netflix and chill, right? You got to make it a verb. You got to Google it. You got to Netflix and chill. You got to Zoom. Right, those are the companies that really have a brand that are going to last. But other people can outcompete them. You can always have other channels to get your eyes on media, um, uh, and it's going to be a game of of having the best deals, the best shows, uh, until some major corporation buys them all out, and then pays off government to make it illegal to have another portal, and then it'll be the that that'll be the only portal. Is that where Google is heading? Where it's now. They're the only, because again, going back to censorship, um, I'll, I'll add this question after you answer that. Are they buying off the government so nobody else can be the Google? Yes. Capital Y. Yes. 
in America for sure. And, uh, and they're so far ahead in, in running a Netflix is not such a big deal. It's, it's YouTube, it's Netflix, it's not hard to run. Running a search engine is super hard, super, super hard. So you, there's, there's barriers to entry there that no one can compete with them, right? Microsoft doesn't even try seriously with Bing and Microsoft is a very, very, very rich company, right? Microsoft is the only other company that could give them a run for their money. But they don't even bother. Like that's, you've got to wonder why did they not promote Bing more? Because they realized they could never take on Google. Google has all the talent on the planet to do it, all the resources on the planet to do it. And it's so far ahead of been doing it for so many years, you can't even compete. You can't even catch up with them. So that's the difference between Google being in a monopoly position versus Netflix currently being in a monopoly position. The only underhanded shady thing Netflix is doing is that they're trading your, your, your digital data. They're sledding out your digital data, your digital profile, just like all these top fan companies are and selling it to each other. That's, that's another way how they make so much money is by selling profiles to each other and selling your, your marketing data to each other so each one can better sell to you uh, secondary products. So Netflix has nothing special. And you're right, they could go the way of the dodo. Uh, but no one, you can't catch up to Google because they've got a monopoly. And Facebook is the same thing. They've got a monopoly. You can't catch up to Facebook. Facebook will just buy Instagram as they did. They'll just buy, one of them will buy TikTok, right? They will just gobble up the smaller things and they will cheat at the monopoly game by controlling the whole thing. Uh, and all the players don't get equal, get the equal money. And some of them have to stop. Uh, some of them can't pass go, some of them can to, to belabor the, 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 to belabor the, uh, the monopoly metaphor. But, uh, but uh, Facebook and Google are, are the bad ones. Amazon as well. You can't catch Amazon anymore. They've perfected it too much. They're going to bury Walmart. They're going to bury places like that. The way Walmart, and kind of, it's kind of fitting, the way Walmart buried so many mom and pops by going into, in, into, into areas. Now, now Amazon is going to do the same thing. That's a largely the reason why the American government is started a cold war and had to defund a lot of what China did is because China was becoming the cheaper Amazon alternative, right? Why buy from an American company this, that's what happened to my, my family in my documentary who were selling jewelry. They would get it cheap from China and then they would sell it. Well, why buy from Americans marked up when you can go, when anyone can go to the Chinese uh, 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 Amazon equivalent and China is like a corporation and essentially is like Chinese Amazon. You could order directly from them. You get it shipped directly from there. They were in a position to make huge amounts of money doing that. That's why the American government had to step all over them and start a cold war. Uh, that's the real tensions behind, uh, that's one of the real tensions behind the, uh, the, uh, the coronavirus, which is mostly a smoke screen. Um, and how, how it, very convenient when it came out that it uh, 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 imp impoverished China as it did, because China was on track to become the next Amazon. Do you have time to stick around to talk about that specific issue? Because that is a, a very, contentious issue that I've been trying to address of the sure. origins of the coronavirus. Can we do an, another hour on that? Or at least 30 minutes? Sure, sure. I, I have no proof. <laughs> I have theories. Well, <laughs> have well no let's, proof. you know, um, we'll get on that. But um, the last question on, on this topic is this idea of, is there any way to outsmart the companies that are selling your information? You know, the, there's ads on YouTube where they say, if you buy this product, we give you random credit card numbers that you can use and then you can delete them, or you can use a third party to buy things, or you can put a fake name or a fake address or a PO box or something like that. Is there a ways to, like you say, you've been out, outside of the radar from Google. Is there ways to protect yourself and to keep yourself out of there? Because it's turning kind of like, a, I don't know if you've seen the movie Minority Report mm -hmm. that through your, um, iris of your eye they could yep. sell you things and all the ads are based yes. on, on who you are um yes. is you know some people have mentioned um either the dark web or some other uh like safer uh ways to buy or search things um have you have you mastered or are you aware of what our listeners can do to not be uh cannibalized by all these corporations there's absolutely nothing they can do you can, you can go live as a hermit in the hills and, sh and shit in a, in a bucket. That's it. No, they, they've got it on lock. The mega rich have it on lock. 20 years ago, there was something we could have done, but nobody listened, right? 
So people like me were crying about this 20 years ago. Nobody listened or understood. They, they were, they, they're smart. They were perfectly positioned to realize there was a paradigm shift, a historical paradigm shift in the human species and the way they communicate and the way they do business. They realized it really was that big of a change. The internet was that big of a change. The web was that big of a change. Making a search engine for it was that big of a change. And now we don't have the internet anymore. We have Facebook and Google and it, we have social media and Google. How, when's the last time you, you, you interacted on the internet that wasn't part of the social media loops or Google? Very, very infrequently. Pretty soon the internet's gonna be gone entirely. It'll be completely commercialized, completely owned. I mean, just look at real estate. That's what happens. There is finite, there is finite real estate, right? There's finite places. You, you might think, well, you can make more, you can always make another website. Yeah, but there's finite ideas out there. There's a limit to creativity, right? Especially the dumber we get and the, the less educated we are. The only way to combat the fang, the only way to combat the Bernaysian sales tactics is to educate yourself. Watch the documentary Century of the Self. Learn, watch the other documentary on uh, Netflix, um, uh, put up on Oliver Stone, the, the real history of America, or the true history of America, or something like that. Right. The people's history of, uh, and of it, America, based really on Howard Sins. shows you how, I can find it for you. Talk about Oliver Stone's is the real, the people's history of America is based on Howard Zinn's um, book. The, the untold history of the United States. Oh, okay. Uh, it's a 2012 documentary series. It, uh, it's gonna say some things Americans are not gonna like, okay. but positions to consider. But, but whether you believe that World War II stuff he talks about or not, I don't care. What I want you to notice when you're watching it is how, just like how Burden was there, just ready to get the oil in Iraq, you gotta wonder, was that the reason that you went really, or the biggest reason? The, the, corpor the corporations of the day were there to jump all over the resources of, of, of Germany and, and, and Europe in the exact same way. So it's very interesting how, when you start looking at history through this lens, you realize it's the correct lens, the lens of money. Follow the money, always follow the money. And that tells you a big part of the story of what's going on that, that, that we had war, we had Game of Thrones, right? Without the boobs and the dragons. We had Game of Thrones with crazy psych, psychotic people running countries and running armies until they made enough money and they gave it to their children. who said, screw this fighting stuff. We're gonna make businesses. And the, new, the nouveau riche became a thing, right? And uh, all the colonialism was, had a bad taste in their mouth. They made so much money, they stopped doing colonialism and people moved over here again so they could have their slaves and, and be free from the, 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 the games of monopoly going on at Europe at the time were not allowing them to become rich as well. That's why they did the perilous journey over to the new world so they could have their own game of monopoly going and set up their own games of monopoly so that they could make rich. And that eventually becomes corrupted and, and invariably, inevitably, uh, because it doesn't have any foresight, right? Just think of the, the 2007 housing boom. They're selling mortgages for houses when they know that the, the whole thing was about to collapse and they're still selling them without warning people. People who want to make money, these money addicts, will sell wood out of a burning building while they're standing in the burning building. Or they'll sell bricks out of the bottom of a house while they're standing in the house. So like the oil company knows that climate change is going to destroy us. And they knew like in the 70s, but they just keep selling oil because they don't know what else to do, right? They don't want to change their whole business model. They just want to keep making money and they don't care. They're, they're either going to be dead or they, they figure they're money addicts. They're literally addicted to money. Why does Jeff Bezos go for a trillion dollars? He's literally addicted to money. Why do all these billionaires have so many billions of dollars and never give it away or never do anything except for tiny little tributary amounts? Like Bill Gates, the big philanthropist, just gave away $250 million. You know how much $250 million is to Bill Gates? You know how much that is? Not too much. I'll put it like this. He's got, he's about a 58, uh, he has about a $58 billion. Let's say if he had 58 bucks, he gave you a quarter. That's how much of his riches he gave away. The big philanthropist is a fucking bullshit. That makes me the angriest. He's, he's the best. He's the best of the mega rich who pretends to be a philanthropist, but then hoards away his money, the vast, the vast majority of it. So he's very good at public relations. He's very smart at how to 
put out his brand out there and make him look like he's such a philanthropist when really he's, he's the second, unless you're including Putin, who doesn't report his wealth properly, he's either the third or the second, the Bill Gates is the second or the third richest person on the planet. Uh, and could, he could end, uh, he could end uh, huge problems like that. Like I have, I have the stats somewhere here, not climate change, that would cost a lot of money. He could end poverty in America like that and still have billions and billions of dollars to spare, for example. 